Now, I just one at a time, but give me your take on the future of the, both of this pool and the WSL's plans for it, and maybe wave pools in general, because I'm just really interested to know where you think this is going to go. I mean, after all, we're still in a world where there's plenty of waves out here for nothing. So, a little broke. Well, at the moment, um, there seems to be like a kind of a, a bottomless sort of pit uh, of kind of, of, of resources thrown at this and that to really drive something really, really good that's going to be, um, uh, be able to duplicate it. So, it seems like there's, and by talking to the, me the mechanics and, and those engineers at the pool, their enthusiasm for where they're going to go with it was like, that kind of opened me up to going, well, they want to, this is just this little beginning of it. So I don't know, it's one of those sort of things where you go, what's, you know, Bain's talking about, we need to get more out of the wave. Imagine when they start turning that little wave at the beginning, which turns into a little wave, and then it'll turn into a big grower, and then, it, mm. then, a, then a big wedge at the end, it sort of stands up and you can get a draw somehow off the bottom of the wave and start to redesign this wave into a way that's really challenging. And actually, yeah, it throws all those challenges at us. We, so it that's a, you think that's it's a real future. That sort of stuff's yeah. real stuff. And I think um, if we start to see that, that's got some real growth um, for the surfer and the performance. And I think the cool thing is that the surfers themselves are <laughs> the ones that really dive into this, this event coming up this year who really want to, you know, get the best out of their performance, the real kind of um, guys who are tuning in and being the best they possibly can, we're going to see some amazing performances in that and see an athletic kind of scientific kind of um, approach to the sport that we haven't seen before. Uh, one that can be actually viewed, um, can be um, tested and, and actually get some data on it right. so we can move forward. Right. There's a lot more solid than like, what we get on the ocean. Right. That's... That's my take. That may bring us further <clears throat> down the track than we've ever seen in the ocean, but what you see in the ocean. Yeah, it's and, funny. Huh? Like I, yeah. I had that surf that day that, that at, at um, Lemoore, and it was really fascinating and all that stuff, mm. but essentially as a surf experience, it was dissatisfying. Mm. Like I call it a dozen waves. So that six made for me. I ripped off six, whatever. Mm. You know, I nearly ripped off seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Just like a session of the pool. It was... <laughs> It was dissatisfying in, on a number of scores. You know, mm. one one score was that like there was no lineup to interact with. You know, I like paddling out. I like duck diving. I like sussing it out and paddling out. And I really like mm. being able to choose what wave to ride. You know, during a surf, and none of that was available. So I kind of was stoked but dissatisfied. Mm. But I, can I make a really quick side point? I totally get what you're saying. Mm. But you're one of the better surfers in the country. You've had an Australian title, right? Two. More than once, that's good. <laughs> I just remember you meet, beating me once in the Northern Beaches contest, that's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I almost won an event. Um, anyway, for the average guy, they don't, they, they'll, they'll gladly trade off that love, that I'm paddling out, I've got my place in the light up, I'm a degree of hassling, you know that dynamism that comes? Yeah. It's, it's fine if you're in the top 5% of surface. Because mm. you know what to do, you know how to hassle. Mm. It's not an annoyance at all. You're in the top. Mm. And that doesn't apply to the bottom 95%. They're the guys that go, I can't believe it, that's my wave. And so that's the market. Right. The market is, yeah. look, you guys and the best service in the world will be the stage. Yeah. And there's spectators mm -hmm. for that. Now yeah. I'm, at, I'm talking out of turn, but that's, that I get you, but I think the market's the, the exact opposite person mm -hmm. to what you and we are in the sure. room. But Riley, that's not, get that that, that's not Kelly's plan for this pool, is it? It's not a retail no. surf experience, right? No, the funny thing is when I put everyone talks about pools as an either or, yeah. kind of um, proposition, yeah. but it's not. Ocean's not going to go away and no. pool's going to be there. But I do think in 15 years time it's going to be a lot of fucking empty lakes. Right. There's going to be, you know, wave guns and, you know, weathers and Kelly's or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, one or two might, might last the distance. Yeah. You know, do you want to make a bet on that? <laughs> but maybe it's a weather. I'll make a bet. I'll check your hands. And I'll try and think of what the fuck is that? But it's like, you know, it's like roller skating rings and it's like adventure theme parks. The biggest things when they come, everyone's in a roller skating. Yeah. Everyone will be into surfing, you know, in wave garden or, or where, whatever starts. So, and then suddenly, they won't be, you know? Right. And, that, I, and I love that's them. That's a history, but that happened with skateboarding. Yeah, sure. How many, how many, how many, how many humps yeah. disappeared? It was bad. 
then the culture changed and all of a sudden it became a lifestyle. So if this becomes a lifestyle in all of those parts of the world that have never served before because it's accessible yeah. and, it is, and you can customize and you can have range, yeah. if everyone's happy in the pool, I know it's a big if, that's a whole pile of ifs. If it, those boxes are ticked, it will start. Mm. That's kind of what... It's got to be everything. It can't I'm just saying. be one perfect way that's got three sections. Yeah, that was it's my It's got to be off the charts variable. 100%. So, a, a culture not. or a lifestyle that builds up around yeah, a wave yeah. pool is yeah. not going to be a surfing culture or yeah. a surfing lifestyle. Even though you're a general group, totally valid. Because, not because it's not like, you know, these ways that they're making and stuff, uh, uh, the potential of them to change and get better and all of that is crazy. But so will, like, the kids who grow up in them and the board designs that they ride in them and their ability to learn on a wave and surf switch foot, like, is that all going to translate back to the ocean or is it going to branch off into its own new culture and new thing like skateboarding, you know, that was mm. just, that was just surfing on the street when it was, that's, you know, how we yeah. remember it, isn't it? You, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, really that's like, what it was. That's what it was, it was just going surfing surf on the street, yeah. gets its own thing. Mm. And I just feel like, I, I remember like the thing about Kelly's wave that I was tripping on, I was just going, wow, like, if you surf this thing enough, you are really going to start thinking surfboard isn't carpet for me on this thing eventually. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to be, um, skimboard is going to be a way better fit there or, you know, mm-hmm. like the, All kind the of speed music. or whatever you want to do yeah. you want to start yeah. doing kind. transitions or, or whatever. Yeah. But, the, but the, is that going to translate back to the ocean? Which but I the reality reckon, of it is, um, it's so, it'd be so expensive to ride the waves, mm-hmm. like a, even a shitty wave garden at 10 bucks or something per wave. <laughs> So if you're a kid, you had 60 bucks, probably you might, you might ride it once a month or something, mm. you have your six or 10 waves, you don't want to fuck them up, because everyone talks about progression, possible, sure. you know, and if you're part of some sort of Surfing Australia Olympic training camp or something, <laughs> <laughs> then, okay. then, you, then you can possibly have yeah. 100 waves, but most people are just going to get their waves and not sa- not necessarily safety surf, but ride within the kind of limits, they don't want to fucking blow it, I fucking just blew 10 or 20 bucks, mm. so I think that mm. whole thing is you'll just go there and you'll surf, like, you know, it's, if you've got a set on a good day, you're like a break or something. Imagine riding a wave pool as a kid and you ride 100 to 200 waves a day. You do that for a week or two weeks or three weeks. Mm. You're getting it so sorted in the wave pool. How good are you going to be? Not just straight away, but within two or three surfs in in nature, you're going to have this massive wealth of angles and curves and turns so under your belt that you'll utilize your waves in nature even better. You'll recognize the difference. But you have done way more surfing mm. in, raw, in a raw sense than anyone else that's on the beaches. It's every single day. Two to three hundred points. Yeah. You're going to do turns. Yeah. You may not get the range that you'll yeah. do out there because the waves don't vary yeah. as much. But you're training in a way like you guys have as pro surfers. You you still got a regimented approach to some of competing. Yeah. And so when they get out there, they've got that sorted. Their limbs will be tuned in for everything to do with probably ten or fifteen different types of turns. Yeah. Go back out there. You're going to go. Oh, I'm so you're talking about that using that the wave pool as a training action. facility, though, rather than yeah, not having a basic thing point. that you. It's like ninety percent of surfing. Try to be the best in the world. At. Yeah, it's even if it's seventy five percent of what what you can get out of the ocean. Yeah. That's insane to have that yeah. Yeah. every single day, hundreds yeah. of waves a day. You go yeah. out there and you're going to froth because you'll get a section that comes towards you. Who'd be able to afford 100 waves a day? Just the people that have been trained because yeah. they'll be well, worthwhile for the brands that are going to get involved in this because it's marketable. Okay. Yeah. Seven o'clock time slot, you know, in prime time or whatever it is, that's that's where the money comes in. Yeah. All you need are the, the individuals. But look, that's not I the thing. I think they're a bit late, mate. I think network TV and sport is done. No <laughs> way. No way. You, <laughs> but <laughs> Nick, 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 what, final point then, I'll even walk out of this one. The rate between... <laughs> the participation rate and the spectator rate, those ratios mm. are what determine the huge success. Now, everyone in, that plays footy in, in, the, in America, they become spectators and the family becomes spectators. It's a huge, the ratio is not that bad mm. because everyone knows that sport. In this sport, virtually no one on earth surfs. Yeah. So mm. it's never going to work until, guess what? You've got to have massive numbers of surfers. And what does that? Any pool that's got a massive wave rate, and you've got a top end where the best surfers in the world are saying it's the best thing on earth. That then grows. Then the Olympics will get it because they're commercially viable when the Olympics goes. Yeah, yeah. That's why the IOC yeah, yeah. said we're not going to do a pool until it's commercially viable. Right. Right. So you need both things. And when both things happen, then the thing's going to be massive. I find it really hard not to be quite close-minded on this. It, it's, yeah. it's funny because I look at when Greg and his brother Monty made the movie Liquid Time. Yep. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched that thing and I was just sat there. So, 
transfixed to these mini ways that were peeling off perfectly and the music and it was seriously the best thing I've ever seen. Mm. And but I never for once thought of that translating to inland or wave pool or anything artificial. It just made me picture myself surfing somewhere in the ocean. Yeah. So I, I it's hard because I, I work in a commercial industry that, you know, wants to sell more product and they want more surfers in the water and yeah. all of that. And I kind of just see that there's this in my mind, there's a massive separation going on right now. Mm -hmm. There's those that uh, want to be the best surfer in the world and they want to make money and there's companies that want to make money and there's investors coming in and there's weight pools being built and there's high performance training areas and there's Olympics. And to me, that's one side. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, I find I'm sitting on this, this fence part because of what I do. Yeah. But to me, I, I just can't, get away from the fact that the ocean to me is is where the real surfing is done and this is going to become another culture, another different sport. Yeah. To me, right. it's a sport. Right. Whereas for me, I'm 90% of me still is in that lifestyle aspect. And right. I, 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 in simple terms, like if you're in a pool, you know, you've got that build up of the wave coming and then you ride it and it's over in 20 seconds and all of a sudden you're looking at concrete in a public tour and a bunch yeah. of people. <laughs> the ocean has this deeper... It's got animals in it. Yeah, it's so like you go under the water and there's this yeah. this thing that you don't even know what's out there. Yeah. You know, you don't know what's under you. It's just this beautiful. It's got weather going across it. It's, it's just a different it's got world. All this so stuff. for me, I I I, I <laughs> understand the wave pool thing, and I think it's good in one sense, but I've, I'm kind of a little bit closed minded to it. I don't, kind of don't want to know about it. Can I make a suggestion? In, in, a, way, in a weird yeah, way, it's, it's weird. Everyone idealizes the broad experience of surfing. But guess what? Without a wave pool, you can still surf at Bondi Beach with nothing but buildings in the background. And yeah, the yeah, no, true, true. And, and you can yeah, also yeah. surf at beautiful public toilets. Yeah, exactly. you, <laughs> you can be in the country, right? Mm. And the environment puts a different flavor on both of those things. Yeah. Time gets distorted when you're in the barrel. Who gives a fuck about what your location is? Well, it the doesn't, it doesn't it, I can tell you from, wait, wait, I can wait, tell wait, you from personal ex experience that time does not get distorted yes, inside the, the barrel at the not real to home, but it's your French. perception of you just you just kind of in the barrel. There is okay, there is not the same thing. You know why? Because you don't you do know what it's going to do. As long as it's random enough that you're not quite sure, and the wave is variable, not yeah. the bottom. The whole thing is the ocean varies. Yes, the contours of the bottom vary a bit, yeah. but the biggest variation, almost infinite, is the fucking wall. Yeah. So if you can't vary the wall and leave the contours alone, you've got a bad model. It, it, it that's is. what the problem is. You're, it, you're talking about something that's. The second best pool. The best pool for you. Yeah. So, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I surf, yeah. I'm so in the moment. It's probably the only mm. place that I'm that yeah. in the moment. <clears throat> I can't remember it. So mm. someone will say to me, oh, what how was that wave you just got? And no, I, go, I don't know. Exactly. How good is that? I think it's good. That's why surfing is so valuable. That's weird. You know, that's really weird. Mm. And I can a wave pool do that? Only if it's random enough that you have know. no idea what it's going to do next because the wall is changing all the time. Yeah. And that's... Exactly but the, the general experience of it... Why would I be saying that I think maybe, the best design know. unless I knew how to do that? Yeah. It's got to be so variable that you go, whoa, what's this about to happen? And what if it can actually vary even more than what nature does? Make distorted things and wobbles and bowls and crossover. I so have, I have. It's got to be nutty. It's got to be crazy. Don't you think the best analogy is um, sex workers and um, and sort of you know, marriage and love and everything? Because you can get a sex worker and have a beautiful experience and you utilize it occasionally and learn some shit. Mm. Then apply it to <clears throat> then apply it to the real world. Then apply it to your marriage. You know? Good God, right? <laughs> That's more reflective than you. I'm going to think about this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to think it's true. You know, you use. You can go to this beautiful, you know, go to this beautiful woman, you know, have a little sort of um, transaction, yeah. and it's quite beautiful, and it's really nice, and, and that's yeah, really good time. But it's not love, it's not yeah. marriage, but it doesn't mm -hmm. make you know sex workers bad people, you know? No, absolutely not. It doesn't make prostitution a bad thing. No, I, I was tortured by that friggin' pool. Okay, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like a lot of people who think too much about surfing. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, I was trying to imagine how this could possibly fit into surfing I was, I was extremely angry that it felt to me like the whole thing was being kept at arm's length from from the surfing communities of the world that it was like locked up over there and getting shown off to us and and then being taken away so you couldn't experience it and and then they had this contest in it and like no you couldn't even go and watch it no 
No, because it's that's arts. That's just the people behind and, it. That's just and, egos and people. Well, it is. That's but, not going to last forever. Hey, but it, it is. But just bear with me for a sec. Yep. All right? Okay? <laughs> so, build up a head of steam for me. All right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I went... And that day, it did nothing else for me. It did a couple of things. I learned a couple of things. But one of the things that I got out of it, you know, in an emotional sense, I guess, was that I just immediately realised this is nothing to be afraid of, okay? Mm. The wave pools are nothing to be afraid of. They don't hold a candle to an oceanic surfing experience. They don't have to. They're just their own gig. Each one that comes along will do something differently they maybe they'll get better. Maybe they won't have time to get better. Maybe the money will run out. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with it. I don't know if they'll really attract the numbers that Greg's hoping for. Maybe they will. Um, but I know one thing for sure. I'm not like, you know, skits by Kelly's pool anymore. I just, I just go, right, that's that thing there. It's, it's pretty cool. Maybe it'll work. Maybe um, all the millions of dollars spent on it will actually pay off at some point. Hey guys, at the end of the day, yeah. if there's a wave mm. and you surf, it doesn't matter. We'll all be lying up to If it's in the Basque country or Lamore or Matter or, yeah. or any, yeah. <laughs> you'll just ride it. Surf, you yeah. gotta ride it. And this is the, the the crux of sort of my experience over there and talking about it with you guys. Like everyone's sort of going, what does this mean for surfing? And you know, you set yourself in. Mm. It's not something to be scared of. Yeah, and it's yeah. not something that needs to be compared to the ocean. Yeah, right. yeah. Because yeah. it is just sick fun. Mm-hmm. It is so fun. Okay. Like, I walked away from that pool and I was kind of flabbergasted. I thought, I just can't believe that, you know, so much money and human ingenuity and energy had gone into building that thing and <laughs> making it actually work. I was. I thought I would never see that in my lifetime, <laughs> my surfing yeah. lifetime. Yeah. An actual pool that made a really good wave, that was just phenomenal. It's got to be a Manhattan um, project, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of a Manhattan project I, It doesn't mean I think it's going to be a real big commercial success. Um, they can do a great CT in that pool, no doubt. I think one of the weird things about it is that the rhythm of that pool is actually right on the money at the CT heat. There's a wave every four and a half minutes, viewers. There aren't a lot of waves, right? There's going to be like 12 waves an hour for those guys to warm up in. <laughs> That's not a lot of waves. What they're used to doing is catching 12 waves every 10 minutes. Um, so it's complex. But the rhythm of the pool, one wave every four and a half minutes is eerily similar to the way those people's minds work. Okay, They will adapt to that pool really fast. Um, a lot of it will be, as Tom said, the, you know, all about their enthusiasm, what they bring to it. Um, so thanks very much for coming on our Surfing on Fireside chat about the amazing WSL Surf Ranch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more Fireside chats. You can friggin' count on it. Um, and uh, I don't know what the next one will be about, but I bet it'll be even funnier than this. So thanks very much and see you in the water.